Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Judith Patterson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Texas, and today I'm going to show you how to make a card using vintage Christmas stamp set um, and some scraps. If you have some designer series paper or patterned paper that you've just been hanging on to and not sure what to do with, um, this card is a great way to use up some of those smaller scraps. Um, about three inches to three and a quarter inches long, um, starting at that, that size, um, and probably a quarter inch to half an inch wide. That would be a good size strip for this project. I mean, you're going to want several of them and that coordinate. And then um, I'm using the Texture Chic Specialty Designer Series paper. Um, I had some scraps of that, so I thought, let's do it. It's kind of Christmassy um, with all those greens and golds. And then I'm also going to be using the gold leafing again. I'm having so much fun with this stuff lately. I hesitated to make another video so soon after the last one where I used it, but... Um, I figured something else out the other day, and I'm pretty excited about it, so I wanted to share it. Alright, let me flip over to my desktop. So I'm just starting with a basic white, this is the thick cardstock. It's cut 11 inches by 4 and a quarter inches, and I scared it. I didn't scare it. I scored it at 4, no, I scored it at 5 and a half inches. I messed myself up saying the wrong thing. Okay, so I'm going to start with a blending brush and the soft succulent ink. So I'm going to just brush off a little and then I'm coming in from the top to start with. And I want to have, I want it to be lighter on top and a little bit darker on the bottom. It's not going to be a huge difference, but a little bit. I'll be coming in with the evening evergreen towards the bottom. So I'm going to go about halfway down with the soft succulent and hopefully getting a little darker as I go down. I have a tendency to get carried away with my um, blending so I'll end up getting it heavier than I had originally intended but it always ends up looking okay. It's really hard to mess this up. I love that you can just keep building color until you get it to where you want it. And I do recommend, I'm using the same blending brush for both colors, since they're both greens. Um, I just recommend starting with your lighter color and then working up to your darker color. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit more of this on this bottom half of what I've already done. Okay, and now I'm going to come in with the Evening Evergreen. I love having something like this big grid paper underneath my card as I do this, so I don't have to worry about messing up my desk and getting ink all over it. And if you're worried about getting ink on the inside of your card, you could always open it up once you've done that top part. And I'm really wanting to build some color down here. So 
the next thing that I'm going to do is just grab a scrap piece of cardstock and using Flirty Flamingo, I'm going to stamp the flowers. And I do recommend stamping them twice. Um, I'm just going to do once because I cheated and did a few things ahead of time this time. So I'm just going to stamp that. Then I'm grabbing my So Saffron. and the inside of the flowers and it's got these little pine cones on it too and if you want to you can wipe some of that ink off of the pine cones we don't really need to stamp those but if you do stamp them that's fine it's not going to hurt anything you might have a little bit of yellow um, on your flower but i don't think that's going to mess it up too much okay so center those up the best you can and just go ahead and stamp it and then cut those out and like I said you want to do this twice um, and then you want to repeat it my stamp is still messy but you want to repeat it with the evening evergreen and these leaves and then you'll fussy cut all of those pieces out and you'll end up with four leaves And then you want to keep two, the two larger flowers, and then keep one of them, one of the um, stamped images completely together. So I'm just going to set all of those to the side for now. And now I'm pulling out the bottle stamp. So this is the larger vintage bottle stamp from Vintage Christmas. And I'm using Pool Party to stamp it. And I always stamp it towards the bottom because that's how it fits into the punch. It's bottom first. So you want this end to um, hang on to. Okay, so this is two inches wide and four inches tall and I will put these dimensions in the description so if you um, want to screenshot them or just have that to refer back to it will be available there and they'll also be over on my blog post that um, goes along with today's card okay so what I'm going to do now is get my silicone mat and a little bit of liquid glue. So I'm just gonna put that in the corner. I don't need a lot, maybe a smidge more. And then I want my water painter. So I'm gonna squeeze a fairly decent amount of water in here. Maybe get just a skosh more glue. I'm going to mix that up pretty well. And I want it fairly liquidy. I'm going to take this and just splatter this glue on the front of my card here. So again, you want something under your card base. So I'm going to let that sit for just a second. And while that's sitting, pardon my arm there, I'm going to take what's left of that liquid glue. I'm not going to use all of it. I'm going to dab some off. And I'm just going to very lightly go over these lines on my bottle. I'm not going one smooth motion. I'm picking my brush up and kind of streaking it across. That one I got a little crazy with. There we go. So again, I'm going to let that set for a minute. 
And I'm going to clean my brush now. So to clean your brush, you just want to squeeze where it says push um, and then just brush it off onto a paper towel or um, run it under some a faucet. But even if you run it under the faucet, you still want to squeeze that water out because as you squeeze the water out, it's squeezing any glue that got up in the cap here. It'll squeeze that out. Okay, so now I have my Gilded Leafing in a separate container. It, you, when you order Gilded Leafing, it comes in this little container and it is really packed in there. I've been using this for a while and it still looks full. Um, so you just want to be careful with it. You don't want to have the fan going or anything when you open this up because it does fly everywhere. So I'm just going to place my card. Let's see. It's not going to completely fit in there. So I'm just going to smooth this over. I think, in fact, I'm going to use my brush. So you might want to do a little bit bigger of a container than I did. Usually I just do um, smaller pieces of cardstock when I'm using it. But I have realized I really like doing the whole card base. This makes a great background for all different kinds of projects. I use my brush. This is a somewhat stiff, large, round brush just from the craft store. Um, so I use it to kind of push in to the leafing, but also to brush it off. So now I'm going to add it to this bottle as well. So I'm hoping that I didn't completely cover up all of those white lines, um, but I wanted just to add some gold accents. So you can make it as heavy or as light as you want whenever you're adding the liquid glue. however you want it, but I kind of wanted it to have that worn, um, vintage -y look. There you go. So now I need to clean up all of this gold leafing, and I'll be right back. I don't think I got quite all that gold leafing picked up, but a lot of it is cleaned up now. That round brush sure does come in handy for kind of sweeping off my desk, too. Oh. There's some stragglers. Okay, so now I'm going to take that bottle punch and go ahead and punch out the bottle. And then I have a three quarter inch square piece of basic white cardstock. So I'm going to grab all of my strips. And I'm going to start with the smaller strip on top because, see, it's not quite long enough. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is cutting this out with the Stylish Shapes dies. So I'm going to use this largest circle to cut it out. So this top one doesn't really have to be um, that long, and the, and the bottom doesn't really have to be that long. So I'm going to find my shortest one, I think probably this one is also pretty short. I'll put this one in here. I'm going to just get them laid out the way that I want them. And then after that, I will start gluing them down. So I 
think that's going to work. So you can use whatever adhesive you like the best to do this. I am sticking with my liquid glue. I like to have that time, um, that added tiny little bit of time that you get with the liquid glue to be able to adjust it a little bit. Boy, that one's going to be cutting it close. I think it's going to be okay. Okay, so I think I got a little mixed up and I should have put this one down here where this one is and flip flop those a little bit. Um, but I think, I think I have just enough wiggle room that it's going to be alright. So you can, if you want to, go ahead and cut to these ends off. I'm not going to. I'm just going to run it through my mini stamp cut and emboss machine just like that. I'll just have to run it this way instead of turning it sideways. So remember to always stagger your plates in your mini em cut and emboss machine to um, just help it to go through a little bit easier. Helps it to start easier. So I'm going to have to be really careful with mine to make sure that I don't have any white showing. I might have to get a little bit more creative than I had intended <laughs> if... Um, if I have that too short. It doesn't grip good on this paper, so it's a lot better if you can have it straight on your desk without your grid paper. I just didn't make mine. I thought I could do it. And I did do it, but it was a little awkward, wasn't it? Okay, so there's our circle and look it did work I don't have any gaps on the sides I love all the gold detail in this I really recommend if you have um, patterned paper that has a little bit of gold in some of the sheets it's just a fun accent or silver or copper or rose gold just something okay so let's turn all of those over. This is going to go ahead and get placed, I think. I think I'm going to turn it like that. So you have this longer gold right up here at the top. So this I'm just going to go ahead and glue straight onto the front of the card. So now I'm going to start layering on, actually no, now I'm going to go ahead and put my bottle on. next little piece is optional but if you have many Stampin' Dimensionals you might just put one right there on the neck. You can leave it off or you can cut um, 
one of the regular size dimensionals in half and use it. Okay, so I'm going to place this right about there, I think. Now I'm going to start layering all of these flowers and things on. So I'm going to start by putting these larger flowers on with dimensionals. I'm just using two and I'm trying to get them kind of towards the center so that I can tuck some things up underneath them. So I'm going to place that hanging off the side. I think that looks good. So this one I'm going to tuck in underneath those. So I'm just going to place some liquid glue on the back. And here's where I have a little bit of that yellow pine cone. I don't even know if you can see it. So I want to tuck that pine cone blotch underneath. So I'm going to just put that under there like so. Then I'm going to use another dimensional. Up kind of towards the top. I'm going to place this also underneath. Like so. So now I'm using my liquid glue again. I'm going to start with the bigger leaves. I'm just going to place this one right under there. This one Just adding a little bit of the liquid glue on the end. And I'm going to see if I can't attach that right here to the bottle and have it just hanging down. I want to pull that down some. There we go. So then this leaf I'm going to put right about here. And then this one, just a little bit of glue will do you. And then I'm going to put it up underneath this one, but over this flower. Okay, so one more stamp. So now I just need a little scrap of basic white, and I think I'm going to have enough that I can stamp it in this direction right here on this sheet that we used earlier. So I'm going to use Evening Evergreen. I was just looking to see which side was cleaner. So I'm just going to use my paper snips to trim around that. And I'm just going to go straight across this time, keeping it simple. Of the top here. That looks pretty good. So now on this this side here, I'm gonna add a dab of glue. And then on the other side, I'm gonna do a couple of mini stampin' dimensionals. And again, if you don't have the minis, that's fine. You can always cut the larger ones up. Okay. 
There we go. And there's our card. I just love that gilded leafing. It took me a while to really get into it, but now that I have, that's all I want to play with. <laughs> Thank you for watching my YouTube um, tutorial today. I hope that you learned something or were inspired to create something yourself. Um, feel free, as always, to make this card at home. Um, exactly like I did or you can tweak it and if you tweak it I would love to see it so you could share it over on my Facebook page or send me a message I would love to see what you're working on I wanted to remind you really quick before I sign off of here that um, through October 31st Stampin Up is offering the starter kit um, plus so it's still $99 if you're in the US but instead of picking $125 worth of product you get to pick $155 worth of product. So the starter kit is what you make it. You can put any stamp sets, any ink, anything from any of the um, current catalogs. So the annual catalog or the mini catalog, as long as it does not go above $155. So um, it is a great time to join Stampin' Up. I would love to have you on my team. If you have any questions, then let me know. Um, and I'll be happy to answer those if you just reach out to me um, either on my blog in the comments below or over on my Facebook page there's so many ways to get in touch with me um, you can send me an email I'm good with that too so but anyway I, I would be happy to answer any of those questions and I wanted to make sure that you're aware there is no commitment to sell anything ever um, and there's not even a minimum time that you have to be a demonstrator. So um, it's a good, good deal if you are looking to build up your stamping stash. The other thing I wanted to remind you about is that this month is um, I have started sending out my 12 weeks of Christmas emails to everybody that's on my emailing list. So if you get my newsletter, you are already signed up. But if you don't, um, then sign up. You'll get my newsletter, and, but you'll also get each Friday an email that is simply a tutorial for a Christmas project. So it might be a card, it might be tags, might be a gift idea. Um, who knows? It's going to be different every week, but the first three or four weeks will definitely be Christmas cards. And then we'll get into some of the other stuff later on. So if you're interested in that, then there's a link in the description where you can sign up for my mailing list. Um, if you're a demonstrator, that's fine. That's great. Um, go ahead and sign up. And um, I'd love it to have you on that list and be able to send that to you. It's just my way of saying thank you and Merry Christmas a little bit early. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. And if you haven't subscribed already and would like to see more, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks so much. Happy stamping.